Hey friends, today I'm going to paint for you not one, not two, but three versions of the same live reference in three different sketchbooks. I've been exploring a lot in mixed media and uh, I'm going to just have a lot of fun and play and I hope you will join me. So let's dive right in. So this was the first painting I did in my Stillman and Burns sketchbook. And this sketchbook is smooth. It is white, bright white and smooth. It's not 100% cotton, but I've been enjoying this sketchbook quite a bit because um, I feel like it's sturdy and most importantly, I love that the paints are super bright and they, are, they leave the painting really very vibrant. I'll put the links of all of the sketchbooks that I'm using in this video in the description below if you're interested, as well as all the products that I'm using in this video. So I am grabbing coral. So I think this is a My Mary Coral and I'm just mixing up a pink that I wanna lay down. And I'm using a big fat filbert brush here. I think it's a three quarter inch. And um, the objective I, I had for this exercise of knowing that I'm gonna paint the same bouquet in three sketchbooks is really to not make a perfect painting. It's not to achieve any kind of result. It's really for me to experiment and play with brushes, with paint, with colors, and to see how much variation and interest I can create from just one vase of flowers and why I love this vase of flowers is um, it's got extremely bright colors like that fuchsia, um, that yellow and even a slightly uh, lighter yellow almost white and then of course it's got uh, the purple um, the purple bulb as well so these are spring flowers that are popping up in my front garden it is springtime here in Australia and these are just popping out everywhere, giving us all this beautiful symbol of warmer days, longer days. So this is the cream uh, flower that I am just loosely uh, painting here. I'm making up the composition as I go as well. I mean, roughly, I am working in, you know, the rule of thirds and not placing anything to, into the middle. and. Um, yeah, just finding a flow as well with, with the direction of where the flowers are pointing. Um, and I, I like using the filbert sometimes because I actually changed to a small, smaller filbert for this flower now. And I really like that teardrop shape that you're really e easily able to create um, with this filbert. And I've deliberately, uh, you know, made a curve from the bottom left almost to the top right because um, I just wanted the eyes to sort of flow. And then of course, my favorite part of any floral painting, adding the leaves, I have here a Holbein, Holbein sap green, and it's one of the sap greens that I really, really enjoy using. I have a whole bunch of different sap greens. Um, and then this darker green here, I actually mixed my own dark perylene green using a sap green I didn't like from uh, M. Graham, mixing up with some dioxazine purple. So I've just mixed those two colors up to make a dark green, convenience dark green on my palette that I can just grab straight away. Um, I'm really liking the composition now. Uh, just adding more of those white flowers so that uh, filling up some of the spaces and, and just adding some you know, some more foliage here and there. And then this stage of my art journey, I am, uh, you know, always trying to create my own compositions from references, whether it's photo reference or live references, and taking inspiration uh, in terms of color palette and, and the movement and textures, but sort of like not copying everything exactly as my own. So I think I'm happy with this one. I'm going to set it to one side to dry and then I am going to use this other sketchbook which is the same size as the one that I used before and this one is a thinner one. 
it's also Stillman and Burn, but it is cream, as you can see. It's not it's not bright white. It's cream, and it's rougher, a little bit rougher, not as smooth. Um, I bought these two sketchbooks on the same day in the shop at the same time because I just really wanted to try them out. And I actually really like both of this sketchbook. But if you if I have to choose which one I gravitate towards, it's probably the white, the bright white, because I'm just I just love a brighter white um, background. Although that said, I have painted some really lovely things in this one as well. So it's going to, it's going to be quite hard. I just can't wait to finish up these two sketchbooks and um, you know maybe do a sketchbook tour or something. Alright, so for this one, I'm using a flat brush here. And I'm feeling that my strokes are becoming looser for this one. Just getting a bit more loose. And I'm placing the red flowers or rather the purpley red flowers in two different spots this time. Just again, trying out something else, a different composition that might work. And um, I am uh, painting the yellow flowers and uh, sort of also working in a, a flow or something. I've Decided to also add that purple flower um, in that spot. And using the flat brush, also noticing that that uh, teardrop effect is not as um, defined as using the filbert. But I'm not going to change my brush now. I'm, I'm not one to really change brushes. Oh yes, and I decided to just let the water and the really loose paint drip a little bit um, for fun. I've been taking a Laura Horn's abstract painting course courses online and getting a lot of loose abstracty inspiration from her courses. I really recommend her course. Um, she's a beautiful, wonderful abstract painter. And when I first saw her work, I wasn't particularly drawn to her art. It, it is true, like, I, it just was not my style. She paints in very muted colours, very earthy, and I'm more of a vibrant, bright kind of thing. But then, as I noticed uh, her paintings, I, I just realised that there's a lot of things I can learn anyway. And I just like the whole, the techniques she uses and all the abstract mixed media stuff. So, um... Definitely go check out Laura Horn. She's also based in Australia, in Adelaide. Um, yeah, I'll link her channel in the description below. So this one is turning out a little bit more loose. Definitely more loose, more drippy, and I really am enjoying the process. Like, seriously, I love that it's drippy, it's wet. I left that big blank space on the top there, almost like a V shape. I'm not sure why I did that, but uh, it's there now. So, okay, I'm just going to probably work on the next piece now. So just looking at it and trying to figure out which sketchbook I'm going to use. All right, so this one is slightly bigger. It's like B5 when closed. And when it's opened, it is a 9 by 12. So I really like this size. This is an Echelab everyday sketchbook. Okay, I'm, I've zoomed out my camera a little bit just so that I can have all the paintings in the shot. I thought that might be fun. Um, all right, so this painting, this one is a 100% cotton sketchbook. It's called the Echelab everyday sketchbook. I really like the size and I've been really enjoy, enjoy playing in it. And I've decided to grab the, um, the flat brush, I think my one inch flat, and I'm going to just use watercolour for this one. For some reason in this sketchbook, maybe because it's 100% cotton, I have been just using watercolour, you know, mainly. Um, because when you use a 100% cotton, uh, sketchbook or paper, the bleeds you get are the best and the way everything dries and moves is really the best. So I almost kind of like not want to um, ruin it, you know, by by layering other kind of me mixed media onto it. 
but um, I'm also going to sort of like honor the actual um, composition that is presented to me in the live reference in the vase. So I'm placing the flowers as I see. And almost right, as I was doing this, I could feel that sense of restriction um, versus that sense of play where I had uh, with the, the first two. Uh, I'm not sure if I enjoyed it actually. In fact, I felt a little bit yeah restricted and like, oh, I'm just going to follow what I see and it's not going to be as explorative and fun. Uh, but I don't know, I just decided to go in that direction and that's where I, I was headed um, with it. So just placing the flowers as I see. Um, yeah. I've also wanted to add the vase because I see the vase. And it's always fun to add a little vase into your floral painting if you, if you do have the vase. And just creating a loose vase by getting a bit of dark blue, and um, I think I'm trying to mix a green for the stems. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Just using all the different greens that I, I use in my palette, you know, uh, sap green, that dark green mix, and just placing the leaves here and there. Yeah, the leaves turned out a little bit darker for this one because I, I was telling you about this dark green mix that I mixed, uh, pre-mixed, and I think a lot of it was in my brush. But it's okay. I tried to get a bit looser as I kept going because I was just like, you know what, I just really want to have fun, I just want to play. And uh, this is real time, this is me painting in real time. I'm a fast painter. I have, I mean it's 11 minutes into the painting and I've, I'm working on the third piece here. And um, I enjoy painting at a speed. I, I, I'm in a flow, I'm obviously in a flow. And once you're in a flow, you gotta honor the pace of that flow, right? Um, that's why sometimes I prefer to actually do a, a, a recording of the painting and rather not have to speak while I paint. But there are pros and cons for having both. So I made, I added a little purple flower on the top right hand corner because actually there is a little hellebore that's sticking out of that vase. So my son, pl um, picked these from our garden for his little lemonade stand, lemonade uh, shop that we had over the weekend. It was so fun. Um, and it was just a little part of his stand. Okay, so I felt I needed to get loose, so I just grabbed a brown paint. I think it's like some burnt ochre left in my palette and decided to just go all around um, the paint, all around the vase with, with it. I've been really into adding backgrounds lately to my paintings. I don't know if you, if you follow me on Instagram, you will notice that I'm just trying almost every single color I can uh, make up on my palette as a background to my painting. And this is the first time I'm using a brownish background. I don't know why, it just felt it felt like um, I felt like brown. And yeah, just going all around it, getting some areas wetter than the other, touching the leaves, touching the flowers as I go, and that sometimes creates a really nice, bleedy, dreamy effect um, into the background. I'm just putting in some very loose, horizontal strokes to um, depict the water in the vase. And then just darkening up the left side of the vase a little bit here. Yeah, so these are the three base layers and I'm going to quickly just swap to doing some of the details. Alright, so for the details, I will be speeding up the video. Um, by two times so what you're seeing here is actually twice the speed so that we don't have to stay too long you don't have to keep watching because you know this thing these sort of like paintings is something that you should experiment on your own you don't have to follow exactly what I do but I'm using my Caran d'Ache Neo Color Tools here for this one and I love how the Neo Color Tools 
are so smooth on a smooth paper. So smooth paper or hot press is just such a wonderful uh, surface for the Neo colors because it just slides on so beautifully. I'm just uh, outlining some of the petals and I wanted to add some orange into um, the painting. At this point, I wasn't really sure if I liked how it turned out, but it's there anyway. Lately, I've been using quite a bit of orange as well, um, here and there, some, a color which I don't often use. I love this lighter green um, and the lighter yellows, and uh, I, I don't have the entire set of this Neo Color 2. So I actually bought just individual colors from the local art shop. And I like that I could choose more of the offbeat colors and things that I, I naturally just felt more inclined to. So I'm just using a dark blue and outline some of the petals and I realized that I felt this urge to just color in a whole, a little section of the background with a dark blue uh, new color. And I just kept going and going and going and wasn't sure what was happening. Was I going to complete and color the whole thing in? I, I just went with uh, my gut feel and I just colored it in one spot and then I felt like okay I'm gonna do it in another spot so working with sort of like the rules of thirds I, I had one two two spots gone and then I just felt the urge to just color in some of the spots in between as well um, and it's so it's so interesting to see how everything just evolves you know pausing a little bit I like the white spaces that I've left and also I love the contrast of this dark blue that I'm creating with my layering with the new color um, so I knew that I needed to have another darker area so I made the top right hand corner a bit darker as well and uh, yeah, I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave this for now and work on the next one. So this one is back to the cream colored background. So this one I tried, I wanted to use my Derwin Ink Tense ink blocks. And they're very similar to Neo Color in a sense that when you paint, when you use them, it feels soft, it feels creamy. Um, less creamy exact actually it's more I don't know it's a blend of a color pencil and ink as well but look I have this little set here it's just enough for me to experiment and play and as you recall this is the drippy loose one so I felt the freedom here to just you know do whatever and just just go around and just have have a nice play um, trying out the different colors I have and also being a little bit wary or careful about not using too many colors because I tend to go quite um, excited and overboard. I needed, I knew I needed a black, I needed some darker contrast so I've actually gone to get a charcoal stick. So this is a, just a little charcoal stick. I could have just used my Derwin Intense charcoal and I felt the urge to just go back to watercolor and I picked a cerulean blue. This is a cerulean blue that I just bought from M. Graham. And I've been reaching for it quite often and just loving right now, just putting accents of that everywhere. And I felt this was just the right thing to do. It, it, was, per, it was correct, my gut instinct was right. I needed to add it that cerulean blue and Yep, let's go on to the last painting. So this is the one that I said I just wanted to work in watercolor. So doing what I usually do, grabbing my uh, silver black velvet, thing size 8, and adding some shadows to the flowers. The shadow color is just a thicker saturation of the pink that I use, I think it's permanent rose. Adding a bit of burnt umber for the darker bits. And just very, very roughly creating some darker shadows on that purple, um, lavender looking stock. And just creating more depth and layers here as I go. You know, not, not getting too hung up on any kind of detail and just enjoying the process. Enjoying the process is such an important part of painting. Um, find something that you love painting. Find the techniques that 
really make you light up and want to do more of. You know, play and just use art as a relaxation and therapy more so than trying to get things right and producing and creating something perfect. I must say this third one is probably my least favorite, which is interesting. I needed to add another thing, so I just grabbed orange and I just put orange dots all around. And uh, even later on, I actually added splatters that's not present in this video. But if you're interested, you can look up on my Instagram. I posted all everything there. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, we're coming to the end of it. I'm actually back to real time and uh, I really enjoy just using one reference and coming up with different ways to interpret that. Let me know in the comments which one you think is looks the best, which one do you resonate more, most with, and which one do you feel like you want to try more of? Is there any technique that appeals to you? Um, i really love to know. For me, I think my favorite is this one where it's got the very blue, dark blue background followed by the crazy chaotic one. And then the least is actually the traditional one, all from one humble floral. So that's it guys, those are the three paintings that I did this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed them and I hope it has inspired you to just pick up a paintbrush and just go for it. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and sign up for my mailing list. Um, I'd love to connect with you a little bit more and you get a free PDF I call Nine Secrets to Loose Florals. Um, just find it in the description below. Otherwise, I hope you have a beautiful day. Stay creative. I'll see you in the next video.